Hello and welcome to this a Neurostim unboxing video. Uh, we'll be taking a look inside this black case and seeing what a Neurostim user will receive upon delivery of their Neurostim device. So, opening the box, we can see that everything is kept in place by this nice pre-cut foam. Um, it just means that when you are transporting a device between locations, uh, nothing is going to be damaged in transit because everything is being held securely. So the first thing jumping out at me is this stimulator module itself. Controlled by the touchscreen here, we also have the 15 pin D-type connection, USB connection to the computer application, the power button, the charging port, and of course, the two touchproof connections for the stimulator module. It's a fairly compact device, um, so for size comparison, we can take a look at just a standard iPhone, and you can see, not much bigger. Also in the box, we have the new interface module. Um, so exactly the same size as the stimulator hardware itself. The two are designed to be stacked one on top of the other. We have on the interface the receiving end of the 15 pin D-type connection. On the other side of the box, we have these uh, seven BNC ports for triggering and digital to analog conversion. And also these three touchproof connections here for the low voltage signal. Also in the box, some new uh, additional new hardware. We have the splitter module. Um, so this here we can use to take our single channel stimulating device and divide those up into HD montages. Uh, each of these channels here have a 10 kilo ohm resistor on, which means that we can do some fairly accurate impedance measuring as well. Uh, we have the two ports here, which come from the stimulator, and then they are split into these four ports on the other side. The system also comes with a start kit, um, which means that there's no extra kind of products you need to, to begin stimulating once you receive the device. So that start kit consists of three neck caps in different sizes to make sure the electrodes are held on the head securely and even, even pressure is applied across the electrode. We have electrode sponges in two sizes, so we have 5x7 and 5x5. We have the carbonized rubber electrodes themselves, again in the same sizes, 5x7 and 5x5. We have the 1020 paste and the saline solution, depending on which method you choose to deliver stimulation. We have our 15 pin D-type connection for connecting the stimulator module to the interface module. We have the USB cable for connecting to a desktop or a laptop computer to use the computer application um, so we can send really complex triggers to the device or we can download the log files from the device. Uh, we can also update the firmware should there be any updates too. We have all the stimulator cables you need, so common stimulator cables, we have the cables to take from the device to the splitter and also from the splitter uh, to the participant's head. And finally, we have the charging plug as well with all of these additional extras to make sure that you can charge the device wherever you are in the world. The last thing in the box is the USB drive. Uh, on here we have the user manuals for the software and the hardware and we also have the pins needed to deliver uh, sham or active stimulation during double blinded studies. So using some camera trickery now, we're going to take a bit of a closer look at the software on the device itself. Upon turning the Neurostim on, we have here the first screen a user is presented with and you can see that there's four options. At the top we have custom stimulation, where a user would uh, decide which stimulation they would like to deliver. Underneath we have presets, where a predefined stimulation can go ahead and be loaded and delivered. Analog input is the next option for us. Uh, this is where we would be connected to the interface module and the stimulator would be ready to receive and deliver arbitrary waveforms. And then the bottom there with settings. This is where we can toggle stimulation logs and save things like the date and time. So going ahead then and selecting custom stimulation, you can see this is the first screen we've been presented with. On the left hand side, we have our four stimulation waveforms. 
and in the middle and on the right hand side of the screen we have each of the parameters which can be changed within those screens. The first selected then is amplitude. This can be changed by pressing either these up or down arrows or selecting the keypad in the middle and typing in our own number. Duration, fade in and fade out can each be changed the same way. Moving on to TACS then, you can see here we have a few more options. So we have frequency, which is the sinusoidal signal and how many times in a second that signal is going to be repeated. We have offset, which is how far above zero that signal will start. And at the bottom here, we have envelope amplitude and envelope frequency. This is because the Neurostim is built in with something called amplitude modulated TACS. So we define separate carrier and envelope frequencies. Carrier frequencies are very similar to typical TES signals, but now they're modulated by a slower envelope frequency. We also set an envelope amplitude, which tells us whether or not the signal will be modulated down to zero. Underneath TACS, we then have TRNS, which stands for transcranial random noise stimulation. So as well as the amplitude, which again we can continue to change with the up and down arrows, we also have two options for filtering and our noise type. The high pass filter and the low pass filter are going to filter out different frequencies of signal and the noise type is going to let us change between Gaussian and rectangular noise. The last option on the left hand side then is pulse. In pulse mode we will be delivering square wave pulses. This mode also lets us see the last option which is new to us, that being duty cycle. Duty cycle denotes the percentage of active signal per signal period. Should we be delivering frequencies which are higher than 50 Hz, duty cycle is limited between 10 and 90%. Once those stimulation parameters have been decided then, there's just a little bit more information we need to give to the nearest dim before we can go ahead and deliver stimulation. So you can see on the left hand side of the screen here, we have some information about electrodes. And this is where we can input the size and shape of the electrodes to enable the nearest dim to do that current density calculation. And on the right hand side of the screen, we have a few options for impedance. And the top one, maximum impedance, is a, a limit that can be set by the user. So stimulation will be aborted if that 10 kilo ohm level is reached. And obviously that can be set to a different level should the user have a, have a preference. And then underneath we have an impedance alarm. Uh, this is like a soft level. Um, should five kilo ohms, or again the, the user's preference, should that level be reached, then an audible alarm will sound, but stimulation will continue as normal. Underneath then we have an option for sham. Um, we have our single blind or double blind options. And on the bottom there, we have the ability to toggle our study mode. Um, this means the stimulation parameters uh, can be hidden so that the subject or user can't see the type of stimulation that's being administered. On the very bottom there, the last option on the screen is the ability to save all of this data as a preset. It then means the next time we come to deliver this given protocol, um, we can set it up much faster. There's just one last step for us then before we go ahead and deliver stimulation, and that's to perform an impedance check. Uh, before we do so, we can just take a look at and confirm all of the parameters on this screen before delivering stimulation and then we can perform our impedance check. For the sake of a demo, I'm using a 5 kilo ohm resistor, so we can expect fairly stable impedance measurements. Um, you, you might not get such stable impedance measurements with the electrodes on a participant's head. But once you're happy with that level, you can click Start and then go ahead and deliver stimulation. This screen then provides us with a few more options. We have the big red Stop button, this will stop stimulation as quickly and as safely as possible. Underneath we have the fade out button. This will make the nearest in perform the fade out that we've defined in the settings. The bottom bar, currently getting a little bit darker, is the remaining session time. The green bar at the top is our live impedance readout. 
And then at the top left, we have all of our parameters which are currently taking place as stimulation progresses. Once the system fades out, we are shown that stimulation has completed and we can head back to the white table and show you the practical elements of setup. So having taken a look at the software on the device, we're now going to take a look at the practical setup we need to do before we deliver stimulation. Uh, in true Blue Peter fashion, we have applied our 1020 paste to the electrodes already. Um, we've got a small bit of paste evenly applied to the electrode, and then we're going to place the electrodes on the head in our montage, whatever that might be. Then, using the net cap that's available from the starter pack, we're going to place this over the head, and this means that the electrodes are held in place not only by the paste, but also pressure is applied evenly across the whole of the electrode. Once you're happy with everything and your participant is comfortable, we can then conduct an impedance check and press start on a device to begin stimulation.